So for around a month now I've been dual wielding the fresh new Huawei P30 and P30 Pro smartphone and spoiler alert, they really are effing marvellous. The P30 Pro boasts pretty much all of the best features found in one of my all time favourite smartphones, last year's Huawei Mate 20 Pro, with an updated quad lens camera to top it all off. But the vanilla P30, while lacking some of its siblings more premium elements, still has a few advantages over that Pro model. So which one of these smartphones should you actually buy? Because you should probably buy at least one of them because they are absolutely bloody brilliant. Well. Here's my full one month Huawei P30 and P30 Pro review. And don't forget for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech to poke subscribe and ding that there notifications bell. Cheers! Now long before the P30 Pro emerged, I was pretty much resigned to the fact that modern mobiles would all be the size of f***ing skyscrapers. And sure enough, that trend hasn't changed one iota. The 6.47 inch P30 Pro is an absolute beast. Still, with those sloping edges and rounded corners, the Pro model thankfully isn't a chore to hold. And if you make liberal use of Huawei's one-handed mode, you'll definitely come to love it well enough. But I do really, really like the more compact nature of the smaller Huawei P30. Don't get me wrong, 6.1 inches isn't exactly miniature, but it certainly feels it compared to the slew of Godzilla-style phones we've handled recently. This is a great looking pair, sporting a water drop notch up top, much more subtle than that of gone at moustache of the Mate 20 Pro, so the display does pretty much stretch edge to edge. And while both phones are pretty damn fine from the front, it is that arse end that really shines, literally. Huawei's glossy glass finish is brought to dazzling life in these breathing crystal and aurora models, just a couple of the gorgeous designs on offer. I particularly like the swirling dynamic surfacing of that aurora option. However, bear in mind that the vanilla P30 is merely IP53 splash resistance, whereas the Pro model upgrades this to IP68 water and dust resistance, so you can go dropping it in the bogs without any worries. But for general hardiness, either will do the job. Those shiny rays are still blissfully scuff free after a full month, and while the older Mate 20 Pro's display was well scratched up by the one month mark, there is nothing to report here. The standard P30 even comes with a pre installed screen protector for extra peace of mind. Cheers, Huawei! Now when it comes to the display tech, there is really no difference here beyond the size. You get an OLED screen with full HDR support and a full HD plus resolution in both cases. The P30's panel does seem a touch warmer on the default colour settings compared with the bigger P30 Pro, but it is really just a tiny gap. You probably won't be shocked to discover that Netflix movies, YouTube vids and everything else looks absolutely spiffing. And you can play about with the output to make those tones pleasingly realistic or smack you in the face vibrant. Unfortunately, you do not get a stereo speaker output with either of these handsets. The P30 Pro does at least have an excuse for this though, and that's the fact that it doesn't actually have a physical earpiece speaker up top. Instead, it uses screen vibration tech whenever you're on a call. Thankfully, the clarity and volume and everything is absolutely fine. It was a bit of a worry before we tested it out, but we had no problems understanding what was going on. However, the P30 does have one clear advantage over its more premium sibling, and that is the addition of a 3.5mm headphone jack to do away with those awful dongle thingies. Definitely great news if you're not a fan of the Bluetooths. Now, I already feel like I've talked to death about Huawei's Emotion UI 9. In fact, I've actually published a full tour of some of the best new features when it first emerged on the Mate 20 Pro smartphone last year, so go check that out for an in-depth tour. Here on the P30 pair, you get the super fresh Emotion UI 9.1. This sports a few background updates and freshens up the look and feel in a couple of key places. But the main thing is, you still get all the same great Emotion UI features, which really do help with everyday use. You've got the one hand and more, gesture navigation, split screen multitasking, parental controls, they're all here and they're all still rather lovely. Security wise, you once again get an optical fingerprint sensor buried away in that display as well, and that seems to be even more accurate than the pretty decent Mate 20 version. It's positioned a bit lower now on both the P30 and the P30 Pro as well, so I found it personally a bit easier to locate when the phones were hibernating. Sadly, those scanners don't work particularly well if your finger is moist or a bit grubby, so definitely the ultrasonic fingerprint sensors on the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S10 win out in that regard. Thankfully, you do have a strong alternative option here, Huawei's excellent facial recognition. This isn't the full 3D treatment, so it won't work so good if you're wearing shades, but it isn't fooled by standard glasses and it does the job even in fairly dark environments. Now it's neck and neck between these two devices when it comes to performance. The P30 and the P30 Pro both serve up Huawei's Kirin 980 chipset as first launched with the Mate 20 Pro. In combination with that slick AMUI software, you can bet your left butt cheek that you'll enjoy smooth, satisfying responsiveness no matter what you're up to. And yes, the gaming experience is as solid as ever. I'll happily blast through match after match on PUBG Mobile with either of these phones. Or should I say, be blasted apart by sneaky snipe and toss pots on match after match of PUBG. Another highlight of Huawei's handsets is of course the battery life. That energy efficient Kirin platform is backed by a mighty 3650mAh cell here on the standard P30, and that's boosted to a 4200mAh cell on the Pro model. 
Despite that difference in capacity, the P30 still keeps up fairly admirably with the bigger blower. You'll still enjoy well over a day of playtime per charge unless you're smashing this thing with non-stop gaming. However, the Pro model does go for longer and it also boasts faster 40 watt charging, plus full wireless charging support as well, and even reverse wireless charging too, which is only really particularly helpful if you have an accessory which supports the Qi standard. Now the very best thing about these Huawei handsets is definitely the camera tech, and while you get a very similar experience between the P30 and the P30 Pro, the hardware is actually very different in a couple of key areas. The 40 megapixel Super Spectrum primary lens boasts a wider aperture and optical image stabilization here on the Pro model, although to be honest that doesn't seem to have much impact on the general photo and video results. Both phones also sport an ultra-wide angle lens, plus an 8 megapixel telephoto shooter too, and this is where the main gap between the P30 and the P30 Pro lies. For while the P30's 3x optical zoom is rather bloody great, the Pro is simply next level. In fact, it's more than next level, it's already on the final boss and smashing it to bits. This 5x optical zoom offers an unrivaled close-up view of any distant subjects, which is perfect for any travellers who love getting geeky with their touristy snaps. If you want to take a closer look at the best camera features and see how the P30 and the P30 Pro really stack up for their optics, then definitely go check out my full in-depth P30 versus P30 Pro camera comparison live right now. So after a full month of having the P30 handset stuffed in my pants, would I recommend them? Well, I already kind of gave that away at the start of the video, didn't I? So kudos for actually bothering to stick around and listen to the rest of this gum. The only problem, of course, is that these handsets are not cheap. The P30 starts at £699, while the Pro model, you can boost that up to £899, basically making them just as expensive as the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S10 phones and Google's Pixel 3s. But as I mentioned, the main reason to buy these blows over rivals is that camera tech. You simply will not find a better mobile shooter around right now. And unlike those Pixel phones, the P30 and the P30 Pro both feel like a complete overall package, and a bloody great one at that. So are you tempted by the P30 or the P30 Pro? Definitely let us know in the comments down below, it'd be great to hear your thoughts, and don't forget for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech to pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers everyone, love you!